Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Della Mostre in the 15 minute pool on ICC. Della Mostre is 2257, so a fairly high rated player in this pool, and he's played nine games only. Um, let's play d5 against him. So he's 8 and 1. That's his record. I'll play a Slav, uh, probably going into a semi Slav if possible. Just trying to get a read on him based on his other ratings. But um, not much to be found. Okay, so G3. A lot of times G3 isn't a good idea against Catalan systems because Black has already established pawns out here. So I'm trying to remember if I want to take on C4 right away or if I'd like to play Bishop F5 first because I could do that as well. Hmm. Taking on C4 is enticing because... It might be annoying for him to win the pawn back. But bishop f5 is pretty fundamental, so let's do that. Um, if he if he plays queen b3, I'm happy to play queen b6, I think. I have a feeling that's fine. If bishop g2, I can just continue with e6. So I won't be taking the pawn on c4 more than likely, but I do have nice development and pretty good pieces. A plan that's pretty common here for white is to play uh, like knight c3, knight d2, and then eventually e4. Knight d2 being an important move to facilitate uh, the advance, uncovers the light square bishop. So I normally play bishop e7. I'm almost wondering if I could take this pawn. It'd be kind of uh, bold to do so, but I don't see immediately how he gets that pawn back. Nevertheless, let's just play bishop e7. He could go knight h4, but I think I'll play bishop g4 in that case, and I don't mind potentially giving up the bishop pair. Plays knight e5, okay. So knight e5, if I trade and then play knight d7, what's he going to do? Because just off the top of my head, I think that's completely fine for me. So I take on e5, he takes with the d-pawn, knight d7. Uh, let's say e4, d takes e4, probably knight takes e4, I can castle, looks alright, the alternative would just be to castle right away, but I think I like this more, just clarifies the central situation, yeah, let's drop this guy back, I'm guessing he'll take on d5. I predict that that move will be played. This is the flag of Greece, I think. Yes, Greece. They have a 45-minute category on ICC. He has played uh, four games in that category. Now, to take with the e or the c-pawn, originally I was thinking c-pawn, but e-pawn is an option. I still think I'll probably take with the C-pawn, though. Yeah, let's just keep it somewhat symmetrical. We capture towards the center. We keep a pawn anchored on E6, so we don't have to worry about him playing E6 in the future. Hope everyone's enjoying their weekend. You'll be watching this on Sunday. Uh, I'm playing on Saturday about 5.45 p.m., Central Standard Time. And I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit different. It probably doesn't come across in the broadcast, but I have a slight cold right now. So if e4, d takes e4, knight takes e4, I could try to take on e5, but I'm concerned about queen a4 check. Maybe I could just go queen d7 then, though on queen a4 check. That looks all right, actually. I don't see anything devastating that he has in response to that. Hmm. So he plays f4 instead, maybe with an eye towards playing e4 soon. Now, to, do I castle or do I play something like knight c5 in a bid to stop e4? Castling would just be the automatic move. Let's say castles and he plays e4 and I take, he takes the knight again. His king is a little bit open. Like I can give a check on b6 
let's say king h1 and then maybe rook fd8. That looks okay for me. Then again, is there any drawback to playing knight c5? None that I see. Okay, I'm just going to castle. It's an easier decision to make. If he plays e4 and then d takes and then knight takes, it's probably okay for me to even eventually take his knight. Even though I give up the bishop pair, I'm going to have a very compact pawn structure. But more than likely, I do something like queen b6 check or maybe knight c5. Knight c5 is a strong candidate as well. And then if we swap, I'm taking with the bishop on c5 with check. I have good development. I can play queen b6 thereafter. I might have to watch out for g4. Bishop g6 and then f5. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So bishop e3. So he blocks the e-pawn. But he gains some stability in the center. And also he doesn't have to worry about bishop c5 with check now. I feel like he might be trying to play knight b5 and get the knight to d4. That would be an ideal blockading square. So a6 comes to mind, as does simply rook c8. Because if rook c8 and he takes on a7, I have b6 trapping his bishop. But what about rook c8 and knight b5? That would be something I'd want to think about. I'm not sure I like that so much. So I might just play a6. I could also play bishop c5. We trade maybe queen into d4 after that. All told, I like this move. I'm going to go with that. Probably looking to play rook c8 next move. If I play rook c8, I might even be able to send my knight into b6 and trying to go to c4. Because with my rook standing on c8 and my knight on b6, he wouldn't be able to play b3 in his current state because the knight would be undefended. That might be a moot point because very likely he's going to play like rook c1 or queen d2 or something soon, but it's something to think about. If he plays, let's say, queen d2, and I go rook c8 followed by knight b6, maybe b3 would run into bishop b4, pinning him. I'm just thinking of ways to mix it up other than putting a piece on c5. Having his bishop on e3 rules out any g4 possibilities for him. So his queen is not communicating with that square as it would if his pawn had moved. If he goes queen b3, I can play b5 or maybe knight c5. Knight c5 looks pretty good. Defending my pawn, attacking his queen, encouraging him to part with the bishop pair. So queen b3 is not a problem. I predict rook c1 or queen d2. Yeah, queen d2, normal looking move. I think rook c8 helps us, so I'll probably do that. Let's just play that kind of quickly. Bank some time for later. And he plays rook fc1, so he must think that this rook has a potential role on the queen side. So here's where that knight b6 idea might become relevant. So if I play knight b6, he doesn't want to allow knight c4, so I would predict b3. But maybe then I throw in bishop a3, attacking his rook. And it's nice that my other bishop controls c2, so he'd have to move his rook, let's say rook d1. And then I get in bishop b4. At the very least, that's annoying for him. And it might even lead to tactical opportunities, although he can plant his bishop on d4. That is possible. I still like knight b6, though. I feel like provoking b3 is in our benefit. Knight b6, b3, bishop a3. Let's say rook d1. Let's say bishop c b4, bishop d4, queen c7, rook back. Problem is the knight becomes misplaced after I complete all those moves. Because the only reason to play knight b6 
is to induce the weakening move b3. <laughs> There's not really other a compelling reason because he's not going to let me get into c4. Queen a5 is another option. Queen a5, he might play a3. f6 could be played. Try to undermine in the center. b5 is a candidate. So knight b6, b3, bishop a3, rook d1. Maybe just bishop c5 then. But again, like why have I gone to the trouble of moving my knight to b6? Well, tempting. I'm not sure knight b6 is the best move. Maybe b5 straight away. It is desirable to get the pawn up there. Let's go b5. I don't want to burn too much time on this decision. Knight d1 played right away. That move seems awkward to me. His idea might just be to swap a bunch of stuff down the file. I don't know. Okay, now I'm thinking about adjusting my plan. Since knight b6, he can play rook takes c8, and I wouldn't be able to take with the queen because he has bishop takes b6. So now I'm thinking send the knight in through c5. I'm trying to get to e4. Let's do that. Obtaining the light square bishop would be nice. Also, I don't have to play knight e4 next move or anything. It's it's just a plan that could be played at some point. Okay, so knight f2. Hmm. Maybe introducing g4 plans. I think a bishop d6, a bishop g6 isn't a bad idea. Just prophylaxis against g4. So bishop g6, if he persists, g4, maybe bishop h4. I oh, know, I would hang that if I did that. You can play h5, but he'll just play h3. Yeah, the knight coming to uh, the f2 square isn't as bad as it looks. I was kind of baffled by knight d1, but this might have been his plan all along. I think queen d7 would just be a pretty standard move. Let's do that. And if g4, bishop g6, I don't think f5 is that strong. I can take, if he takes with the bishop, he would be kind of threatening to take on f7, but my knight defends that even. He'd be threatening to take on c5, uh, but I could take with the bishop and my queen would be communicating with f7. I don't think g4 is as big of a, a deal as I initially made it out to be, I guess is what I'm saying. So... We'll see if he can make g4, f5 appear more th fearsome, but for now, this is okay. The only thing is, I'm not sure where to put my knight now. It's not doing a whole lot on c5. I think I'll just play rook fd8 next move and reassess. If I play rook fd8, I will be toying with the idea of d4, so... At some point, I might need to jump my knight into e4. might become necessary. I'll be curious to see what the engine thinks is the best move on move 14 when I played b5, because 
possible I didn't get it, that one quite right. Maybe now just knight back to b7. Let's just do this first. If queen e3, I can just drop this back to b7. If knight a4, there's b3, so that doesn't accomplish much. Okay, so we're going back. He has bishop b6, but I can just move my rook. Or I could take on c1 and then play rook c8. It seems like he's trying to pressure me on the clock a little bit. He didn't play incredibly fast in the opening, but now he's picked up the pace. I think the position's roughly equal. He might play knight d3. It's very likely that the rooks will get exchanged down the c file now. Case in point. Yeah. So if knight a5. Because this is a typical scenario where neither side wants to be the first one to capture. Like whoever captures along the file um, kind of loses the initiative and loses the file itself. So if I play knight a5, um, what if he goes g4, bishop here, and then f5? Now again, I don't think I really have to worry about that. Let's try knight a5. We'll pre-move this capture. One idea I have is to um, induce b3 so I can play bishop a3. That idea from earlier. Also, I like the fact that I can bring my knight to c6 and attack that blockading bishop on d4. So I'm eyeing the c4 and c6 squares with this move. If he trades and then plays g4, bishop g6, f5, I take, uh, maybe moot point, but I think that was okay for me. Okay, so bishop a3, is that really worth it in order to gain the file, or should I just play knight c6 now? Kind of leaning towards knight c6. Knight c6, bishop c5, though? Let's do it. I think I could play bishop a3 whenever I want. Maybe he can go queen c3 now. Nah, but I have bishop a3 if I need to. Queen c3 being an idea just to um, pin me down the c-file. But that won't turn out well, I don't think, for him. So I managed to make my knight relevant again. Earlier, it wasn't too happy on the c5 square. This could devolve into a blitz game, though. h5 might be a move I'm, I'm considering playing soon. Creates love for the king, also discourages g4. We'll see what he comes up with. I think on bishop c5, I'll play h5. I'm wondering if he'll play knight d3 at any point. Whereupon I'll have a decision to take the knight or not. In an endgame, like if the heavy pieces come off the board, it might be useful to have bishop b1 available. Okay, so h5 is what I intended to play. Just quick double checking if I want to mess around with d4 or anything. d4, he can just play queen d2. I don't really see what I've gained other than a potentially weak pawn. Yeah, so let's do this. I'll pre-move this capture in case he wants to be the one who swaps.
knight d3. No, sir, no swap. Okay, so if I take, takes with the pawn maybe, knight b4. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, let's take. It does take with the pawn. d4 still doesn't do much. Still doesn't achieve anything. So yeah, this move. And I'm offering to go into an opposite colored bishop position, but I think one in which I might have a small edge. Because I feel like his dark squares are very weak. And I've done a good job, good job of establishing lots of pawns on light squares already. That was one reason I didn't mind parting with my light square bishop. So I'm attacking a2 with this move. If he plays a3, I can swap everything and then take the pawn on d3, although actually if a3, probably knight takes d3 is the better way to do it. Deflecting is queen. Queen takes, I can take on c5. Yeah, that's the much better way of carrying out that plan. So that is our threat right now. If he plays d4, I can take on a2. He moves his rook somewhere and I can escape through b4. So I think we got our bases covered there. Yeah, very curious what he'll play. If bishop takes, I'll probably play bishop takes. I won't play rook takes c1 yet. Let's just pre-move this. Oh, and if bishop takes e7, I take c1, he takes, queen takes. He can infiltrate here, but I think the weaknesses of these pawns will keep his play under wraps. Okay, so he did take on b4. We're headed for this end game. I might be able to make something of this because his pawns in the center will be hard to defend, whereas my weaknesses are pretty far back in my camp, like f7 and a6, whereas his, like the d, the d pawn's a weakness. Um, this entire diagonal is a weakness. So bishop there. Do I have any tactical shots? Doesn't look like it. I'll probably just play g6. Yeah, let's just go g6. Useful move. Defend the pawn. Give g7 to the king. Bishop a3 is a possibility at virtually any moment here. Could also play bishop c3. Hmm. Yeah, let's go bishop a3. Encouraging another trade. I think he will take, because he doesn't want to cede me the file. And he can't go anywhere up the file to avoid the trade. So his king might end up having to hide on h3. Is he going to go d4? Maybe. Let's go bishop c1. See where he puts that queen. Now maybe I can come into c3. So I'm slowly working my way into the position. Now putting a pawn on d4 like never makes sense for him. Okay, let's do this. I'm trying to go bishop c5. Potential threats. I wonder if sacking in here ever makes sense for him. Probably not. Check. Let's just do this. Maybe king up before we proceed any further. He's going to hide his king. Okay, let's bring this down. He's being adamant about not creating any weaknesses. I'm going to advance these pawns. He's already like in blitz mode practically. My A pawn becomes dangerous. He can't ever move this pawn. Okay, against that I can... Check. I can give a check. We'll go here. I can play queen d1 again. Okay, let's advance that one more time. 
Now we can put this here. Granted, he um, will never take me. Maybe I can start doing something like this, though. I wonder if he'll go queen d1 at some point, because otherwise I'm just going to swap and bring my king up. Let's do this. Now he can't. He can't get out of this. My king is coming all the way up. I don't know about putting the king on f1. This could be trouble for him. I'm trying very hard to win this. He's still pinned. Hmm. So if I take, he takes with the bishop, king up. He has to go bishop d1. Huh. Don't know if I can win that. Um, if king c3, he has a check on e1. I can take the d3 pawn then, but I don't know about that. All right, I got to make a decision now, though. Check. Unfortunately. He has a lot of pawns on dark squares on the king side that I can attack. I'm just going to pre-move this. I'm thinking I might be able to pull something off. Because now he has to go bishop d1, and I get to win this pawn. Yeah, there's a lot of pawns on dark squares that are prone to attack. So let's go here and just remind him that king b2 is a threat. I don't want him coming down to e8 and suddenly winning pawns. Hmm. It's a tricky endgame, though. I'm not entirely sure about it. I might also make use of a move like g5 somewhere soon. Like maybe even g5, g4. Huh. Or f6 even. But F6, I don't want to trade too many pawns though. Wow, he's going to do this, huh? Okay. He's going to take here, take here, and take all these pawns. I would assume that's probably losing, though. Take, take, take here. King here. Yeah, a2, take, take. Hmm. Well, I can stop them. Problem is, his king gets pretty active, doesn't it? No, but I've got it. I've got that under wraps, I think. Hmm, I don't know. His king is going to come up. Wow. King e2. Not sure why he didn't play king e2. Tricky, tricky. Yeah, I think I blew any winning chances I might have had. Now I gotta work to just make a draw. Yikes. Okay, let's bring this back. Time warning. Oh, I gotta hurry. Got to bring this back now. Check. Yeah, unfortunately. This is a draw now. I think. <laughs> G5, king e7, g6, king f8. Yeah, that's a total draw. Complete and utter draw now. 
Mm, that's too bad. I underestimated um, the possibility. Check. Let's see if he tries to flag me now. Draw. 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 All right. Yeah, he tried to flag me, but it was a repetition. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's that's too bad because if I had a little bit more time, I think I could have made something of that. I definitely didn't expect Bishop E8 to work out like it did. I didn't even calculate this line where he goes and eliminates all the pawns in the row. Um, okay, let's go back. I think it's poor form for him, by the way, to try to flag in that ending. Uh, just king and pawn versus king in a dead draw. So, let's do this. So my setup is pretty flexible. Um, Knight e5 immediately surprised me. I don't know if I like that move by him. I have seen knight d2 here before, defending the c pawn and getting ready to play e4. So I'm not sure about knight e5. So I just took and played knight d7. Apparently this is fine. Take. Took with the c pawn. Yeah, there might be something to be said for taking with the e pawn instead. We're attacking this pawn. If f4, what's the difference? I have more pawns on this on this wing. Queen b6, Check. king h1, knight c5. And the computer prefers black, probably likes black's activity. Hmm. I don't make those moves often enough, uh, like the asymmetrical recapture. I feel like a lot of times I just prefer the symmetrical recapture when I should think asymmetrically. Still, though, wow, this is a pretty big edge it gives me. And queen Check. e6, stopping bishop e3. Maybe then playing knight c5. Okay, what if he goes bishop e3? Can I take on b2? Perhaps. I didn't give queen b6 too much thought, but it makes sense. So castle, bishop e3, uh, a6, just played to control the b5 square. Again, the computer's not thrilled about it. So it seems my play in this phase of the game could be improved. Queen a5 it recommends. I thought queen a5 would just be met by this. Now bishop c5. I didn't exchange those dark square bishops, and I perhaps should have. So a6, queen d2, rook c8, rook fc1. Okay, so here's where I really thought a while about this move, but I just didn't really see a follow-up after b3. And then this, and then rook d1. It looks nice, but... In all these lines, I thought my knight would be misplaced. I didn't think uh, with his pawn on b3 I ever had any future with this knight, but queen c7, let's see what the engine likes. Just rook fd8 now. Okay. Still doesn't look like anything special, but maybe I'm just playing for a restriction. Uh, what if he plays queen e3? Just move the knight. It is nice that he can never occupy the c-file with my bishop sitting on a3. So I played b5, striving for an improved version. I thought about rook c4 briefly. Maybe should have considered it further. Um, b3 would probably be the answer. The idea of rook c4 would be to try to get him to take so we could take this way and uh, maybe black has an advantage. My pawn on c4 cramps him. So I played knight c5. He went knight f2. Queen d7. Bishop d4. Rook here. Uh, pawn b4 is possible, huh? Yeah, because if take, I assume knight d3 wins material. Double attack. That's a good point, because if I could play b4, then I gain space on the queen side. I might be able to play a5, or even queen b5 if I want to defend my knight further. All these lines seem to yield black a small advantage. So bishop d4, rook f d8, queen e3. And I mentioned around here I thought the position was roughly equal. That seems to be the case. Although in the subsequent play, I like what happened. Knight a5. He keeps my knight out of c4. And I bring it back here. And now h5. Just a useful waiting move, I think. Stopping g4 business. And here I took. E took. Knight b4. Yeah, I think the engine is kind of reflecting what I said. Uh, I think if we get into... A minor piece endgame now, I'm going to have an advantage just due to the pawn structure and my more compact position. Um, also, maybe the C-file control, which it looks like I'm likely to get. 
I didn't consider bishop takes e7 that much, but the Check. engine seems to think that that's a better course for him. So we'd end up in this knight versus bishop ending, where he can play queen c8, but I just, Check. you know, perk of playing h5, I can just tuck my king away. He has the file temporarily, but I think these weaknesses keep him in, in check a little bit. What happens if he plays a3, idea of take queen c2? I guess I have this check. one to the rescue. Or queen a7 first. Okay. So that's not a concern. So he opted to try to defend this endgame. Yeah, it's a nice position. We've done a better job of him in putting uh, pawns to complement our bishop and restrict his bishop. And our weaknesses, f7 and a6, are hard for him to attack. And we're also likely to get this c file, mainly thanks to the fact that b3 has been played, so I have that bishop a3 move. Rook c6 would be another way to try to take over the file. Idea of queen c7 or c8. Note that he doesn't have that same option of moving his rook up the file because his queen is standing here. It doesn't support that. Check. Now the question, can black win? He did something that I think is correct in these positions. Like, he, he knows he's worse, and the maximum that he'll probably achieve is a draw. So he just started playing really quick. He didn't, like, pause to think too much about, like, how what's the best possible way to defend. He just played moves that he knew were relatively safe Check. that didn't lose right away. Like, moving his king back and forth. I mean, honestly, he doesn't really have much else to do. No pawn advance should be made by him. I think if he advances any of his pawns, he's weakening himself. At various times, I thought, like, maybe he could do this and go for some sort of perpetual, but it's probably not going to work out. Like, I always have a move like this to cover. So king h3. I kind of jostled my pieces around a little bit. I could also, you know, now that I think about it, if I'm going to bring my king over, maybe I should do it under the cover of the b-pawn as well. Maybe I shouldn't trade a pair of pawns before bringing it over. It might not be out of the question to do some plan like this and keep open the, the a5, a4 option, because a2 would be harder to defend, much harder for him to defend, impossible really, um, if I was able to get a position like the game, but one in which he's not able to play bishop b3. So there might be something to be said for that plan. It's a little long range, but I really expected him to try to disrupt my queen advance plan somehow. Check. Queen c3, okay. It's still suggesting I play a3, which I did. Bishop g1, what does this move do? I don't know how good the engines are at these endings. Bishop c5? The engine, just looking at the engine line, doesn't really come up with much. Let's just say he kind of goes back and forth. Is the idea to put the bishop on d2 and then go here? Because if so, I didn't consider that. That might be a good plan. I was trying to figure out a way to win a2, but it didn't occur to me to play the bishop in, protected by my queen, and use that as cover to play queen takes a2. That seems to be a serious winning attempt. I thought I had to include this remaining ingredient, which is my king. Yeah, at various points I was expecting him to do some sort of check, but I guess he was pinned a lot of the times. Never really check was a huge option. Okay, right here I had a minute and a half left and I had to make an important decision because I feel like I've achieved almost all I can with bringing my king in. I could play this move, but he gives check. a check, and if I take here, I thought bishop e2. Check. <laughs> this looked pretty dangerous, I don't know. Apparently it's okay to do this, but... What if this? Check. Am I going to play bishop e3? That like somehow winning? Yeah, I mean, th this is probably not a move you're going to play with a minute, minute and a half on your clock. Might be the way to go, though. Let me just see what the engine thinks in this position. Yeah, I guess it still wants to do this, trying to go for bishop d2. Queen f2, idea there is that um, they might have queen b6. They'll have to go for some counterplay like that. And that suggests a line where I still do this and check. try to evade all these checks that he has. Check. Check. And I'm, again, like not getting mated. It's scary, though. Bring your king to e4 and check. position where you haven't traded anything like that is, is scary. Queen's still on board. Yeah, this ending might be a draw now. Bishop a4. Underestimated this move. Didn't really think he had time to go win all these pawns. 
But yeah, now bishop e8, and it looks like I have to start thinking uh, about a draw after this. Certainly after all this happened, he's the only one who can win. I thought he was going to play king e2 and try to shoulder me out king d3. This is called shouldering, where you use your king to prevent your opponent's king from coming to a certain square. That seemed more dangerous. Um, yeah, I don't know if I would have been able to hold in this case, even though it is apparently a draw. Bishop b2, and if ever this pawn gets advanced, I have bishop f6. What if he just starts marching? I start trying to move my king around. Yeah, this, this could be actually similar to the game. The other thing is, um, he can make a draw just by eliminating my g-pawn. Because even if I end up with a h-pawn plus my bishop and king and he has no pawns, it's the wrong color bishop. His king can hide on h1, and that's a theoretical draw. Many of you will be familiar with that. So it's actually pretty easy for him to make a draw now. He's the one playing for the win. He has the draw in hand, basically. Looks like I played pretty accurately to hold this, though. I mean, it maybe wasn't that tough to hold, but it's kind of scary, especially um, you have to be careful about your, your mindset. You, know, you don't want to panic when you suddenly start have to play, play for a draw, despite, in your eyes, playing for a win the entire game. So you Check. can't panic in those situations. It sounds very obvious, but I see people, um, you know, get very rattled by a change of events. Whereas a, a grandmaster, if this were to happen to a grandmaster, um, they'll just continue as if nothing happened. They're like, oh, well, I was playing for a win, but it looks like now I have to make a draw. Let's do it. Let's be objective here. So, and if he had taken with the pawn instead, it's it's a similar type of draw. Um, sometimes black can even draw these positions when white has a bishop on the board. Like if white had a light square bishop, sometimes it's possible to set up a fortress. Um, my students will know that because I've, I've looked at fortresses like this with two connected pawns. But yeah, this is very, very holdable. He tried about the best he could, I think. Yeah, and now Check. bishop takes e5 is the smoothest way to make a draw. Yeah, and I, I'm not a fan of him trying to flag. I mean, this is a well-played game or a hard-fought game, and he was clearly playing for the flag at the end. I had to make a draw by repetition rather than um, ju us just agree. So, all right, yeah. Um, very intriguing opposite color bishop end game. I'm a little miffed that I didn't win that one, but it was tricky, and he played He played pretty good in defense. He, he made quick defensive decisions, and he played off the fact that I was down on time. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another 15-minute game. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.